Hey, starting unit three right now, this lesson's gonna be pretty easy. It's called periodic phenomena. And listen, phenomena, that is a word. Listen, if your teacher's as old as the algebras, I'm pretty old. I'm not that old, but I'm, I'm mostly old. When they hear phenomena and then they think of the Muppets, this song comes up. Phenomena. And so if, if your teacher knows this song, they're officially old. And if they don't, then uh, you're probably young still, right? I don't know if you guys know that song. But periodic phenomena, so easy. We're going to be talking about that. Uh, here's what the definition says. As input values increase, if the output values, the Y values, demonstrated repeating pattern over successive equal length intervals, uh, we have what's called a periodic relationship. What this means is if you go a certain distance and you notice a pattern, like this is a sine curve, and we go up and then down, and then we're back at the, the middle again, and then it repeats over the same distance for the X, right? It takes the exact same distance to repeat, then that is called a periodic relationship. And another word to describe this would be cyclical. It's cyclic to go through this pattern. There's a cycle, okay? So real life examples of this, phases of the moon, high tide and low tide of the ocean. And I actually want to show you an amazing uh, animation that was created about the moon. So in this animation, the sun is all the way to the left and it's shining on the earth and the moon. And on the right here, you can see the view of the moon from the earth. Okay, I'm going to have this go around two times. This is by Phil Hart, by the way. He's on YouTube. Give him a shout out. But we start right there where there's no light. And then as the moon travels around the earth, you can see the entire moon. The illumination increases and then it decreases again. And then this happens repeatedly over and over and over again. So in my internet Google searching, I did find this cool graph which basically graphs exactly what we were looking at in that animation. We start out here with the percent of the illumination of the moon. And if we start with a new moon, which means you can't really see it at all, right? There's 0% illuminated. And then eventually it goes up to 100%, but then back down to 0%. And then it would repeat over and over again. So now knowing what we know about periodic relationships and how they repeat, we can take a single period or cycle and we can construct the rest of the graph based off of what that looks like. So here are two examples, uh, numbers one and two. They want you to sketch the rest of the graph based on one cycle that's given here. Okay, so the way that I like to do this is I just find the key points. I know that this cycle starts at zero, also ends at zero, and there's a zero in the middle. Okay, I also know that it takes eight units to complete. That's one full cycle here. So I would say the period equals eight. Okay, the period of a function is the smallest change in x values it takes for the function to repeat itself. All right, so we would say the period of this function is eight. And they want us to sketch the rest of the graph. And what I like to do is I like to play halves with our trig functions. I know that in between here, if I go halfway, it will be at a minimum. And if I know I'm halfway here, it'll be at a maximum. So that helps me sketch it a little bit. If I go over two units, it'll be at a max. So if I go left two units, it should be at a minimum. I know that the output values are the same. So this, this minimum here will be the same as this minimum. And if I go back two more units, it should be back up at zero. And then I can come over here and kind of construct this graph. And it would look something like this. And then I could keep going into the future here, right? Just like Elsa, didn't Elsa do that? Into the, into the, what are we doing? Into the unknown? This is known though. So this is not like Elsa. We know exactly what's gonna happen. It's very cyclical. Okay, so then number two, they give us a weird graph here, but you know, here's what we have to keep in mind. We know it repeats. It's the same value over and over again. So you know what I might wanna do? If you can copy and paste in your brain, that would help you out. So look at the cycle that they give you. Let's talk about what the period is. The period of this cycle would be what? This relationship has a period of four, right? Because that's what one cycle takes to complete. And you can take this, and if you can just kind of copy and paste it, boom, how easy was that? And we can do the same thing working backwards. It's a copy and paste. So you have to get the same pattern over and over and over again. Nothing changes. And if you can do that in your brain, then uh, sketching these graphs is pretty easy. In fancy math terms, we'll say that the period of a function is the smallest positive value k such that if you add k to x, you get the same thing that you had before, which is f of x. All right, that's how I think about what this says. F of x plus k equals f of x. If you add some value to x, you're gonna end up in the same place that you were at. So in our first example here, that would be eight, 
right? K would be eight here because we're adding eight and you end up in the same place. We're at the beginning of that function. And right here that we would say would be four because it takes four units to complete that function. How about that? So the next part they might ask you to identify is the period of the function just by looking at it. And identifying the period is pretty easy. You just have to find a common place in each cycle of the graph and figure out how long it takes to get there. So how far is it from one quarter to three quarter? And to figure that out, we could do some simple math. We could take, you know, three quarters and we could subtract one quarter. Okay, that's gonna give us what? Two quarters, which is one half. So it takes, you know, it's half a unit here. Look at that. By the time you're at one half, this whole function starts over again. But some students might be asking, why didn't you just start right here and then go to here? And the answer is, well, you, you could. You could do that as well. In fact, you can pick any two points that match up with each other and you can use those points. And in fact, like on number four here, it actually is to our advantage not to use uh, this point right here. It's kind of hard to see where it would be. It's not there, right? Like one whole cycle, if we start here, then a whole cycle would be over here somewhere. It's off the graph. So why don't we just use our minimum values here? I mean, because I can see two minimum values, but I can't see two maxes. The middle part's a little bit, it's a little uh, blurry here, but here are two minimum values. And I know that one occurs, that's hard to see, but one occurs at negative four. The other one occurs at 12. So what is the period of this function? It would be 12 minus negative four. And 12 minus negative four is 16. That would be the period of this function. Easy enough, right? Could you use some other points? Well, sure you could. I mean, it, if you notice that this point right here matches up with this point, because they're both on the way down, right? Then you could use eight and negative eight. You get the same answer, but why would you do that? Just pick the easy points. Periodic functions take on various characteristics of a function, such as increasing, decreasing, concavities. Recognize that any characteristics found in one period will be in every period, of course, because they repeat themselves. Below is one cycle of a periodic function. Use the graph to answer the questions. Now we're going to look for patterns here too. Notice that this function starts up at the top at a maximum, comes down, goes back to the top, and then it's periodic, which means it's just going to repeat itself over and over and over again. So I'm going to, to answer some of these questions, like the first question says, is the function increasing, decreasing, or both on the interval from 18 to 20? Okay, well let's look at a pattern here. We know that the, the period is four, so it takes four units to repeat. Right, that means that the, a second cycle would be completed by eight units. And if I did another cycle, it would be completed by 12 units, because I'm just adding four, right? So that means that also 16 units, that's where another cycle would be completed, and then 20. So I know that you know 20 would be right here, because it's a multiple of four, and it repeats every four units. That means that this would be 19, this would be 18. I know there'd be a minimum at 18, so from 18 to 20, we would say that the function is increasing. Easy enough, right? Well, the next one asks about concavity. Is it concave up or down or both on the interval from 31 to 33? We can use the same logic, right? If this is, you know, multiples of four are going to be at a maximum. So that means that 32 will be the maximum. All right, let's clear that out. So I know that 32 will be a maximum. That means that 31 would be here right at zero and then 33 because this is repeating right would come back down to zero so it would look like this all right is that concave up down or both both don't make no sense so we would say concave down from 31 to 33 and lastly is there a relative max or min or neither at the point x equals 82 and again 82 well you know what i'm going to do i'm going to use the fact that i know my multiples of four four multiples of four are going to be at a max and so i know that x equals 80 should be a max, right? Because that's a multiple of four. I know that right in my head. I don't even have to do anything there. So if 80 is a max, that would be like right here. Then I go over two, one, two, it's going to be at a minimum. The other way you could think about it is 84 is a max, and that would be right here. We can go back to, but that should be a relative minimum. And that's basically it. Easy peasy, right? That's a pretty easy, straightforward lesson. Hey, listen, whenever you're talking about periodic phenomena, think about that Muppets clip uh, phenomena. Phenomena. You know the one I'm talking about. This is Mr. Kelly. Remember, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. See ya!